canoeing and kayaking. Today, I will show you how a boat stay afloat in the ocean. Look at that. With the help of buoyancy, a piece of paper stay afloat in the surface of the water. What is the difference between kayaks and canoes? Welcome to show ko! Today, tuturuan ko yung pinagkaiba ng kayak at kano. So, maraming nag nakamali sa pinagkaiba ng kano. Yung kano kasi, meron yung wide. May ganito siya. Oh. Pero pag kaya, wala siyang wide. Pag ganito yung kaya, open wide. Wala siyang cover. Kasi yung kaya kasi, is hunting boat. While yung Canoeing naman ay transportation of goods. So makikita nyo, yung pagluto ng bangka, ay ano, kaya! Kaya! Langiing! Lalangiing! Kayaks meaning man's boat or hunter's boat, originated from Inuit and Aleut tribes of Arctic North America. Interestingly, the early kayaks were very individualized as each kayak was created by the user basing the measurements to the frame of his body and not on any standard. Building the kayak was also a joint effort of the man and his wife. The man built the frame from wood or from whalebone skeleton and it was the wife's job to stitch the seal skin used to cover the frame. Whale fats were used to waterproof the boat to improve buoyancy. The natives placed, placed air-filled bladders of the seal in the vessels. The word canoe originated from the Carib word canoe, which meant dug out. Canoes were originally made from large tree trunks. The trunks were made dried for months, and the middle part was burned. After which, the burned part was scraped away with shells. The whole process took one moon or 28 days. The more well-known version of the canoe was introduced by the North American Indians, where the frame was built from wooden ribs. The frame was covered with the lightweight back of birch trees and sometimes elm or cedar trees, whichever was more available to them. The birch tree was the better choice though because it was lightweight and smooth and most importantly, it was resilient and contain, contained waterproofing qualities. What are the basic parts of the kayak and canoe? Canoes and kayaks have features that are common and unique for each one. The decking, the hull shape, and the bottom are just few of the differences. Let us take a look at the parts of each boat. Basic parts of cano. Yoke. A beam that in the center of a cano that allows the cano to rest on a person's shoulder when portaging. Stern. Rear end. Gunwale. Acts as structural support and it defines shape of a boat. Bow. Front part. Thwart. Crossbars reinforcing the canoe and prevents sides from pulling apart under load. Seat for paddler up the bow part. Basic parts of a kayak. Deck, top half of the kayak. Foot brace, found inside where feet rest. Hatch, covering on the deck where food and gears can be stored. Cockpit, opening the kayak's deck where the paddler sits it can be covered with a spray kit or waterproof kit that is placed around the waist then slip over the cockpit shrum or combing. Hull Bottom half of the kayak How does one start the canoeing and kayaking adventure? Learn how to get in and out of the boats. For first timers, getting on a canoe or a kayak on the water can be quite challenging. The boat may rock and cause some tilting when entering the boat. Therefore, balance is important when entering the boat. Getting in a canoe. A. Entering from the shore. Tandem canoe. Put paddle in the end of the boat. Slide part of the boat in the water. And then hold the boat so it will not float away. The person who will be seated on the bow part enters the boat first. That person should carefully walk down the center of the canoe while holding the gunwheels. Position self, then settle. Remember, in entering the boat, 
keep the center of gravity as low as possible to minimize the chances of flipping the boat over. The second person then carefully puts one foot in the center of Kano and pushes up the shore with the other foot while keeping hands on both sides of Kano. Then he or she lowers self into the seat. Reverse the order when getting out. Entering from the dock. When entering from the dock, the same is basically done. However, it will be best to keep the boat parallel or horizontal to the dock. Get in the boat one at a time, taking turns in holding the boat steadily. Remember to always put the paddle in the end of the canoe within reach. Reverse the order and get in. First, get in a kayak. A. Entering from the dock. Make sure that the paddle is within reach. Keep in mind that weight should be at the center line. Otherwise, the kayak will tip. First, hold the back. Hold the back of the cockpit. Combing and the feet should be planted near the center line. Lift, then, lift self. Within, with the weight mainly supported by hand and move bottom to the cockpit. B. Getting from the shore. Put the paddle right behind the cockpit rowing and the other against a rock or improvise if there is no rock, like using the paddle to get support from the bottom. Take a firm hold from the back of the cockpit combing with the, uh, with the paddle held between thumb and the other combing while, while the other hand is keeping the paddle fix, fixed on the, on the rock. Sit carefully over the combing, keep the body weight on the feet, Lift one foot inside the cockpit and sit in. Then, raise other foot inside the cockpit. Remember, remember the balance. Getting out of the kayak is, is done in the same way but the in opposite order. Second, learn the correct posture. In canoeing, the first thing to do is to relax. This way, the muscles will not be too tight. While seated, then just Slide it forward around 5 to 8 degrees only in the pelvis. The back should be straight without being forced. Shoulders should be slightly ahead of hips, head or neck. The legs should be slightly bent, just enough so that you cannot push legs straight without moving on the seat. Too much leaning forward restricts lung capacity. The posture is lucky. One wants to use the body efficiently. Do not lean on the back on the backrest, but just sit straight and relax the shoulder. Opening the chest for is in beating. Keep legs together and fit against the foot pegs. Adjust foot pegs, making sure that the knees can can bend slightly and spread the and press against the kayak for extra balance if necessary. Keeping legs together allows better torso rotation and more efficient paddling. Third, learn the proper way of holding the paddle. Holding the paddle incorrectly causes loss of power during forward stroke and puts the paddler's body in an awkward position. Kano paddle has only one blade. The key grip of the paddle should be held by top hand with full pumps covering it, it, not holding it around. Top hand is the hand that is higher. It may be your left or right hand. The bottom hand holds the shaft, not the throat of the paddle in about an arm's length down from the other hand. The bottom hand, which holds the cano paddle, generates the most power while the upper arm and grip create the balance and the accuracy of the stroke. In kayaking, the recommended grip is usually the distance between the two elbows. Hold the paddle elbows and center over the head. Adjust your hand so that your elbows are at right angle. The blade has two faces. The front has a cup-like shape that is also referred to as the power since, the, since it creates power to move the kayak. The other side is the back face. There are pedals for left-handed and right-handed paddlers. For instance, assume that one uses a right-hand feather paddle. In kayaking, right-hand fix, left-hand loose. Technique is applied in using the paddle for strokes, recoveries, and maneuvers. This means that the right hand is your control stroke. Your left hand should grasp, should grasp the paddle shaft loosely. This is to allow the right hand to twist the paddle to desired angles for turning, bracing, or rolling. Do not hold paddle too tight. It will tire the hands quickly. 
Fourth, let's learn the basics of making the boat move forward. There are many strokes in paddling, but for the purpose of knowing the basics, the discussion will focus on one stroke, which is the forward stroke. In canoeing, paddling forward is the most basic and important stroke, as this will bring you to places. The forward paddling in canoeing is described in three phases. The catch, power pace, and exit and recovery. One, catch. This is the start of the stroke where the blade enters the water. It is important to know that the shoulder is used, not the elbow, as the axis of movement. The bottom hand should be positioned at the correct angle. Notice the, the top arm. It should be at the level of the shoulder bent slightly and not in front of the face or the chest. The position should be over the water on the paddling side, not over the panel. The position of the trunk should be slightly forward, around 80 degrees, but one should still feel he or she sit, still seated perfectly erect. Excessive leaning will wear out the paddler faster as he is fighting gravity pull and slouching will make it difficult to use strength in the shoulder effectively. Two, power place. A strong stroke is what will actually move the boat forward. In this phase, the bottom hand should be pulling while the top arm is pressing down slightly forward. The torso rotates, thus the paddle side shoulder forwards as the paddle enters the water. Simultaneously, the blade is planted in the water up to the blade or shaft intersection. The blade should be completely immersed at right angles in the direction of the travel. This is what they call squaring the blade. The angles, what they call squaring the blade, is wrong. The blade will slide sideways. Remember, the paddler is moving the boat and not the water. Think as if the blade is being fixed in the water and the paddler pulls the boat past it. While doing this, the blade should be kept close to the boat where the inside edge of the blade is still touching the side of the panel. The stroke ends when the torso rotation brings the paddle back to the lake. From catch face to the power face stroke, the toes, leg, hip, torso, and shoulders all work smoothly together and in coordination. 3. Exit and recovery. The stroke is finished when body rotation is complete. At exit, the blade moves out of the water to the side. The top hand is still high and the bottom elbow is bent to lift the blade. Take the blade forward for the next stroke. The blade should be kept close to the water to avoid catching the wind. In kayaking, the torso and legs will do most of the work. The shoulder and arms will be used to transfer power. Just like in canoeing, one paddles by rotating the torso while keeping the arms straight. To start paddling, make sure that the front part or power face of the blade is facing front. Place the blade in the water close to the feet and to the kayak's waterline. The lower arm should be almost straight. The upper arm should be slightly bent such that the upper wrist comes a bit closer to their sides. Press the stroke side foot firmly against the foot peg. Sink the blade into the water. Using the muscles of the torso, get more power at the beginning of the stroke where the paddle has just entered the water. Then, lessen power at the end. Keep the upper arm relax and hold the paddle loosely. So much muscles can rest. Keep the upper hand at about an eye level and allow it to move across the body and to keep the paddle vertical. After the stroke, move the blade out of the water and prepare for the next stroke. What are the important things that we should always remember to be safe in kayaking or canoeing? C. Check weather conditions. A. Always plan ahead. This includes studying the river maps ahead of time. N. Never forget to put your things in waterproof bags. O. Orientations given by facilitators or leaders are important. They tell you the rules and regulations and safety procedures. Listen and follow them well. E. Equipment should be tried and always checked. Try on new or unfamiliar things and ask questions on the proper way of using them. K. 
No first your skills in swimming and canoeing or kayaking. A. Avoid paddling alone, paddling far from coastline, or paddling in routes of ships. Why? Yield to safety and know where to go in case of emergency. A. Always wear personal flotation devices and other safety equipments. K. Keep dehydrated as you will be under the sun. How does one start the kayaking adventure? First, getting in a kayak. A, entering from the cock. Dock canoe, which meant dug out. Canoes were originally made from large tree trunks. The trunks were dried for months, and the middle part was burned. After which... 